Hi guys, I'm Karen Rice and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be painting tulips in watercolour. It's a step-by-step -step demonstration. And I have a reference photo for you here. It was taken by one, of, by one of my students, Carol. So thank you so much, Carol. So here are the colours I'm using for the demonstration. Purpurite Genuine, Wisteria and Phthalo Turquoise Daniel Smith watercolours. De La Rowney's Quinacridone Magenta and Windsor & Newton's Lemon Yellow. So it's quite a nice selection of colours to paint my these beautiful tulips. So I'm just going to start an outline drawing of the tulips. I'm using an HB pencil. don't want to use anything softer than that, a 2B or a 3B, because I, it tends to, on watercolour paper, get a bit smudgy and dirties the watercolour paper. So I'd really suggest an HB, a B pencil. Nothing harder, not an H or a 2H, because it gets a bit scratchy on the watercolour paper. When you're doing a pencil drawing, an outline drawing for watercolour, try to keep it as simple as you can. Don't do any sketching or shading with the pencil, just try to keep simple outlines. And here's a really, really good tip for you. When you're drawing and you make a mistake, whatever you do, don't rub the mistake out. Keep drawing and your mistake will help you make good corrections. And then at the end, do all the rubbing out. Otherwise, you tend to rub out mistakes and then redraw them again. And in doing that, hopefully, this exercise will help you with your drawing. So to start off the painting, I'm using a size 10 brush, sable round brush. I've mixed up some quinacridone magenta, the De La Rowney one. I'm just painting wet on dry the edge of this first tulip. And every now and again, just rinsing my brush and then putting clean water in and pushing the paint to the outside edge. Here I'm just putting a little bit more paint in the center. And as you can see, I'm pushing up paint, pushing up water rather, from the bottom up into the paint. And you can actually create some light at the bottom of the tulip. I put a bit of yellow with the phthalo turquoise at the bottom to start the stem here and just bringing that down to the bottom. Just putting a little bit of very pale pink to the right hand side of the tulip and then a darker one because the centre of the tulip is quite dark. Still using the quinacridone magenta and just putting a little bit of dark there as you can see and keeping the, you know, so actually now I'm putting a bit of wisteria, that's that Daniel Smith wisteria, it's gorgeous colour just to finish off that tulip. I've still got a little bit on my brush and I've used it on the left hand side, just putting a little bit of the quinacridone magenta on the right hand side with a dash of yellow in the middle. And as you see the reference photo, there's a little bit of a yellow tinge in the middle of that tulip. Putting a little bit more of this dilute colour, all wet and dry around the edges here. And a little bit of yellow and then the yellow and the phthalo turquoise wet on dry down this stem. So just, you know, just taking everything step by step. There's a little bit more phthalo turquoise in this wash, again, wet on dry. The secret with watercolour is try to paint an area once, don't keep back going back over and over. And the other thing is always have your brush fully loaded with lots of paint so you don't run out of it too quickly. Just putting a little bit more of a very pale green at the bottom of this tulip. It's a lot paler and greener at the bottom in the reference photo. And then a pale wisteria colour here with a touch of the magenta. Just very, very pale wash and then a bit stronger and darker at the top. And again, just pushing in clean water to get these lovely dark edges. And just finishing off all these stems and leaves now, just pushing in the paint, dropping in a bit of yellow so you get some nice colour mixes using the point of my sable brush to get that lovely point on the leaf. Just adding a little bit more colour to this right hand leaf. That's the phthalo turquoise and the lemon yellow. Just dropping a bit of dark on the left hand side of that leaf. And now I'm actually gonna use very dark magenta with the purpurite genuine Daniel Smith color just to create the darks in the center of this tulip. So this technique of watercolor painting is damp into damp. So you want the paint damp. You don't want it too wet. 
and you want the paper damp and not too wet. That way you create control, you get the control of the paint, it doesn't run everywhere and you get lines and marks as you see I'm doing here without it dispersing into the rest of the painting and it stays where you want it and it creates a soft edge. So you get the detail, you get the darks, you get the soft edges. So I can just work my way in here. The other thing I'm doing here is I'm actually lifting off the paint because it's still damp, it enables me to do it. So the way to lift off in a good way is to rinse your brush, take off all the excess moisture in the brush and then lift off the paint, sort of really let the paint soak up the moisture on the painting and lift off. I'm just putting a little bit more dark down the stem here and as you can see there's a dry a hard edge is falling so the forming so the paint is actually drying now but if you see this tulip here it's still bleeding out a little bit so the, so the paper is still damp and because of that because I didn't want it to bleed I'm just lifting it out with a bit of tissue but as you can see it's just crept out again so watercolour, you have to keep an eye on things sometimes. It always, you know, you think you've got it right and then you look around and it's changed or it's dried a lot paler. So um, it's just being open to things with watercolour. Don't get any fixed ideas. Always be prepared to have to change things or to accept things the way they go. And sometimes they can look really beautiful. So I'm just developing this centre tulip here, putting in the dark creases of the petals, using that magenta and the purpurite genuine and just getting a little bit of tonal value and detail. Just painting again a little bit of dark down the right hand side of the stem and now I'm putting a little bit of dark on the right hand side of this tulip then softening the edge with some clean water but obviously it drags the paint down but I've also deliberately kind of left little stripy bits there so it looks like the light catching the tulip. Again putting dark on the edge here and then pushing clean water up so that it creates a nice dark crisp edge. Um, I haven't blow dried this picture yet but it is starting to dry naturally by itself. Because there was a puddle here again I'm just lifting off with my brush. The sable brush is able, enables you to really lift off lots of moisture. So I'm just putting a little bit more dark into the center of this tulip here. It's sort of a little bit of damp in places, but drying in others, which suits what I'm doing now. So I'm happy to do that. And just putting the darks in here, dropping water in here. So you've got dark either side with a little bit of light in the center of that little gap in the middle. And I've actually put a tiny bit of pink in my blue and yellow color to create a bit of a greyish shadowy colour for the stem and the side of the tulip there. I'm using a size 3 pointed sable, one of my favourite brushes, it's a Winder & Newton sable and it enables me to have lots of paint on my brush but gets lots of lovely detail. It's the fun bit here now, I'm actually starting to have a little bit of fun with this painting, I've got hard work's done, now you can be quite creative. So I'm putting colour on, thick creamy colour and then dropping water in because then you get these lovely creative things that watercolour does when you've got these back runs, you've got all these yummy texture. And one thing I've noticed about this um, Claire Fontaine paper, it does have some lovely texture on the surface. It's a rough surface, it's 300 grams. So it'll take all this dropping water in and it won't sort of buckle too much. And because it's a gummed pad, that's when it's gummed all the way around, it's got a little slit at the top where you can take the paper off afterwards with a palette knife. It doesn't sort of buckle and so it keeps, it keeps the surface quite nice and flat for you. So I quite, I quite like these gum pads. So I'm just, what I'm doing now is I'm just building up. So this is the important thing about this video which I'd like to sort of show you is that sort of building up with a painting. You keep sort of putting on detail. The important thing is obviously you don't want to fiddle too much, but at the same time you need to put darks and detail on. And that's what I always try and keep telling myself. Don't fiddle, don't keep putting mid-tones on, just now aim for those dark tones. And the, the thing about watercolour I've learned over the years, it's all a bit, you want to be creative, but it is that discipline. 
and that there's many paintings that have ended up in the bin because I've just overdone it and I've just kept putting on sort of too many of the same tones. And one thing I've learned now is to tr really try just to have light, medium and dark tones so I don't spoil and make my watercolour painting muddy. What I'm doing now is really sort of a, that sort of perpite, genuine Daniel Smith colour with this thin, thin sable brush I was speaking about and just putting on the little veins of the tulips here and then just softening them when they look a little bit harsh. And it just gives that lovely detail of the tulips that you can see where it catches in the light. And it also, again, going back, it's, it's making me not overwork the painting and I'm getting towards the end of the picture. So I'm always concentrating on the next stage each time. If you do have any questions about what I'm doing in this video, please put them in the comments section below. I'll be more than happy to get back to you as soon as I can, because even if you think it's a silly question or, you know, it's obvious, it's, some, it's not obvious sometimes. And a lot of people would be so glad that you've asked it because it can answer what they're thinking as well. I'm just putting a little bit of tone on the right hand side of this tulip here. Um, just literally coming towards the end of this painting now. I'm really pleased with the result. Obviously, you always look at it and want to do better, and you, you know, you, but the way to do that is to keep practicing all the time. Thank you so much for watching and tuning into my YouTube channel. Again, if you'd like to um, subscribe to my channel, you can get updates of latest videos. Um, for all the materials and any questions, please see in the description and comment section below. But thank you for watching. Bye for now.